Okay, chapter 5 goes this way, and I saw on the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written. Whoa, that's a big deal. That scroll written reminds us of what we're supposed to do every day. Jesus told us, and last week, which seems a long time ago to all of us, uh, we looked at what we call the Lord's Prayer. And that line in there, thy kingdom come, is what we're talking about. Why should we pray daily for God's kingdom to come? And we're going to look at that in chapters 5 and 6. Now remember where we are, because it's been, you know, a long time. We covered last week Christ's church on earth, Revelation 1 to 3. Now we're slipping into uh, Revelation 4 and 5, and we're getting into the beginning and introduction of the next, so we're really kind of breakneck speed going through Revelation. Almost all of last week, the church on earth. Uh, then at the end of last week, we slipped into Christ's church in heaven, and now we're really in that church in heaven and looking at it unfolding as far as uh, the tribulation period. Now, if you remember, we saw all that uh, in, a, in a kind of a more graphical way. Uh, we spent all of last week talking about the church on earth, how we're preparing every day for standing before Jesus Christ, how the, the control room, as it was, of the universe is the throne of God, and everything is, is unfolding before his throne. And God shows us that we safely will arrive. Uh, Jesus said that he would not partake of the Lord's table until all of us are safely home. Remember, that's what he said to his disciples uh, during his last supper with them. He says, I will not partake of this cup again until I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. That's why we're supposed to. This, this whole class is, are you praying every day for the kingdom to come? This is the, the bang hit of the kingdom of God when the king arrives. The prep is the tribulation. So the tribulation is not showcasing demons and showcasing Satan's you know, antics. It's showcasing that God, according, look at verse one of chapter five, I saw at the right hand of him who sat on the throne, that's God the Father, the majesty on high, as, as he's called in Hebrews chapter one, a scroll written. The same scroll we find in Ezekiel and Daniel. It's, it's actually God's battle plan. Did all of you read over the weekend that somebody's leaking all the Pentagon documents? How many of you notice that? Anybody? Ah, oh, good. We have some news readers. Good. The, the battle plans and the preparations of America and our allies for the Ukrainian war and a whole lot of other stuff Somebody has been taking from briefing rooms, taking their cell phone, taking pictures of, of papers they folded up and stuffed in their pocket, and they've been broadcasting it. And it shows our plans. It showed how many uh, missiles Egypt was making for Russia and going to send to Russia to fight Ukraine, and yet Egypt is the largest recipient of U.S. aid after Israel. And that was embarrassing to them. Then it showed South Korea. South Korea? was going to send um, gazillions of artillery shells to help the Ukrainians. But yet, in public, South Korea said, we're not taking a side. We, we share uh, a zone so close to Russia, we don't want to be seen fighting against them. So that's our battle plan, and someone leaked it. This is God leaking, only not leaking, broadcasting his plan. In fact, that scroll is all about the, the transition from the church on earth to the tribulation. So it says, uh, at his right hand, a scroll written inside and on the back and sealed with seven seals. Why is that significant? Well, everybody getting this letter that Jesus dictated and John wrote down and sent to the churches, remember, all believers were supposed to read this. I just got a, a sweet message from someone on YouTube who used the you know, response box to send me a response. And they said, you don't need to spend time on the tribulation because we're not going to be here and it doesn't matter at all what happens. I thought, what a self-centered view of life. They think the rapture is the escape from the world and they can't wait to escape. And why should they even care about what's going to happen on earth? Well, you know why I care? Because look, how much of God's plan is after the rapture. Right there is the rapture, that green arrow. Most of God's plan is after the rapture. And what this 
person, I, I'm thankful for their question, or they, well, it wasn't a question, it was a, a statement. Don't spend so much time, I just want to hear about now getting ready for the rapture. And I thought, that is the best way to get ready for the rapture. You know how to not get discouraged? Know that Christ's coming. He's going to right all wrongs. Do you know how not to feel bad about how bad the earth is? God's going to fix the earth completely. I mean, every drop of water on earth is going to be potable, as they call it, drinkable, okay? Uh, every, every bit of the soil on earth is not going to have... Did you know they just found off California, the fishing boats, you know, had a problem, they sent down divers, and they found that in the 70s, some company, when DDT, you ever heard of DDT? Good thing you, most of you haven't. It was a horrific, poisonous, toxic insecticide that was made, primarily manufactured for farmers, and when the U.S. government outlawed it because it's toxic and deadly and stays in the soil, the company just hired boats the cheapest way to get rid of it was they filled boats with hundreds of thousands of tons of DDT and they sank the boats in the Pacific Ocean. And now the boats have, after 50 years, rusted and the barrels the DDT in has, have rusted with all the corrosive salt water and now the DDT, hundreds of thousands of tons of it, is percolating up. It's killing the fish. It's killing everything. You know, it's not good. You know, it's horrible what humanity has done to this planet. God's going to fix all the oceans, all the air, all the water, all the animals, and it's going to be good. And so that's what the context is.